Oh, good morning. So you fancy working for the US Air Force as a fighter pilot. You're male, you're fit, you're aggressive, you've got good stick and rudder capability. You can fly the next F-30. Sorry, sir. We don't want you anymore. What we're really hiring is women, empathetic, with advanced human brain and computer interface possibilities, whatever that is, because that's what actually flies planes, a brain in a box. Hey and welcome back. I just had a fantastic conversation with a Air Force pilot actually from the UK who talks about what is required today to become a top gun pilot. No longer are they looking for hand-eye coordination. No, that's all automated. No longer are they looking for super aggressive attack decision making. Nope. That's all an algorithm. The only reason today, 2023, that they might hire a human, a human being at all, because all the planes are remotely controlled. There's no humans in the cockpit. But there's one skill that they still need from us flesh and bones. Certainly not flying skills. They want your brain to make decisions in the cockpit because it's slightly faster today, so far, than an AI algorithm, than an app. So is that true? And how does that work? Yep, that's true. Let me show you. Pilots of today were one of these. This isn't a crash helmet. Actually, it is. This is a way of picking up my brain waves and sending it down a wire to an app. The app flies the plane. You sit and communicate with the app to tell the plane how to fight. That's the only bit that they want. All the rest is automated. A lot of this technology is coming from the United Kingdom. Watch this promotional video from a company building these helmets for sixth generation fighter planes and use in space. Fascinating stuff, but humans have a problem. We are easily distracted. Ooh, what am I gonna have for my lunch? Oops, I missed the airplane. Yeah, that's no damn good, especially for drone operators. If you're sitting in a hangar, flying a remote drone in a conflict zone for maybe a few days, these things stay in the air for a long time, and you've got a focused mission to actually fly the thing or monitor what it's doing. But I'm worried about my wife and my cheeseburger. That won't work. If you notice drone pilots in the facility all wear helmets, not because they're gonna hit their head, because when they plug in in the morning, the helmet removes their external thoughts and focuses their brain only on the task of flying the drone. This brain altering helmet that helps people focus on a task 
is real. People around the world are strapping batteries to their heads to supercharge their brains. Are you looking to boost your brain? Or perhaps you've heard about the many studies done on depression, anxiety, brain injury, or chronic pain, such as fibromyalgia and migraine. Electrical brain stimulation is a tested and proven technology found in universities and clinics around the world. Meet the corporate world of TDCS. Transcranial Direct Current Stimulation, or TDCS, and it involves using electric currents to stimulate your brain. To me, this sounded a bit quacky, corporate, and hoaxy. <laughs> Health professionals dealing with people with severe mental illness can treat them by altering their brain waves. And here it gets really interesting. It's used by the military. If coffee just doesn't seem to be enough sometimes to get your brain charged, how about a dose of electricity? The Air Force Research Lab is researching a transcranial direct current stimulation, or TDCS, as a potential means to help airmen stay alert and sharp during critical missions. But it's used in a very counterintuitive way. In fact, it's used in its opposite way. Watch this clip, and I'm gonna freeze it at a relevant moment from this doctor. What if there was a simple way to enhance your alertness, your attention to detail, boost your ability to focus, and even your capacity to learn and retain new information? No, this isn't some late night infomercial pitch or Hollywood sci-fi plot. There's actual scientific research that shows this is possible with the help of just a few strategically placed electrodes. And much of the study in this field is happening at the Air Force Research Lab in Ohio. At the Applied Neuroscience branch of the Air Force Research Lab's Human Performance Wing, Dr. Andy McKinley and his team are conducting an experiment. Uh, we're putting a couple of electrodes on the body, one on the head, one on the arm, and we pass a really weak current in between, and the current makes it easier or harder for the neurons underneath to, to fire, the brain cells to fire. So you can either increase activity by making it easier for the neurons to fire, or you can reverse the polarity and make it harder for those neurons to fire and therefore decrease activity. Hear how he said, reversing the polarity? Now in this story, I'll be the first to admit I don't really know the big picture. If you know more, let us know in the comments. But let's get back to drone operators, snipers, and pilots. Now, we don't normally associate combat fatigue with sitting in front of a computer console, but it's real and it's a growing concern. The modern RPA program began in 1995, and it took 16 years for the Air Force's drone fleet to log 1 million flying hours. But by late 2013, only two and a half years later, that number had doubled. Today, RPA crews are logging three times more flying hours per year than traditional pilots. So yes, combat fatigue is a real threat to the mission. So we now know that TDCS stimulates different parts of the brain to help with people with problems. But a DARPA study revealed you can use it to do the opposite, suppress the human brain. What I'm gonna say now is a staggering piece of information. A sniper, a pilot, and specifically drone operators are being experimented on to cut out distractions, to focus the brain. So TDCS apparently can not only stimulate, but also suppress distractions. Imagine you're a sniper waiting for hours for a target and there's birdsong and you're wondering what you're gonna have for supper and does your girlfriend really love you and... Oh, I've just missed the target. Well, that wouldn't work. How about making their brain focus on what their job is? And that's what DARPA are experimenting with. The scientists at the research lab's applied neuroscience branch are committed to optimizing the cognitive performance of the warfighter. And as the Air Force leans harder on its image analysts, sensor operators, and RPA pilots, that mission becomes more important than ever. 
Warfare in and of itself is a human endeavor, and if we can enhance the human piece of that, their ability to think and to make decisions, uh, this could really give us a, a strategic advantage in the future. And possibly they're doing the same thing to help concentration on pilots, and very specifically, drone operators sitting for long shifts monitoring this tedious screen looking for a minute detail you don't want to be distracted by stray thoughts so there's experiments going on where their brain waves are suppressed to help them focus on the one task they're hired to do so stop weightlifting Stop being the top gun pilot. If you want to be the last humans to fly fighter planes, because in a very short time, there's not even going to be a human in the cockpit at all. Here's the preferred list of things that we're looking for to hire. Um, super smart, a woman, small, light, and has a computer brain interface whatever that is. We are in the last days of pilots, both military and civil. Airplanes will fly themselves. Good luck. The truth is out there. Did you enjoy that film? If you did, give it a thumbs up. Thank you very much.